Well, hello and welcome to the Bottom Line Me podcast, where we like to spend some time talking about relevant issues and challenges in the title and real estate industry. I'm Ian Allard, and today our topic is something that's on everyone's mind, fraud. Without a doubt, our industry continues to be one of the primary targets of fraudsters. So today, I'm very excited for joining me, the CEO of Texas National Title, David Tandy. David frequently speaks to organizations and groups on this subject and on various other real estate-related subjects. He's also quite actively involved in the Texas Land Title Association, where he served as chairman of the Cybercrime and Wire Fraud Task Force. He's also served on the American Land Title Association's Technology Committee, Regulatory Committee, and the TILA and RESPA Integrated Disclosure Rule Best Practices Task Force. I'm really also excited to share with you that next month, he will be the guest speaker for Agency University's quarterly webinar, and he's going to present on this topic, Avoiding 25 Frauds That Are Affecting the Title Industry. So, David... It's so great to meet you today, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Certainly. Glad to be here. Great. Well, let's start with the current landscape. How would you describe the current landscape of fraud and cybercrime in our industry? I think it was a big wake-up call last year. Whenever, beginning of the year, we began to see even a new fraud that we hadn't seen as much uh, called seller impersonation fraud. Uh, that was kind of piled on top of the fact that for many years we've been dealing with different kinds of wire fraud. Um, and it's uh, it just seems like it just continues to escalate more and more each year uh, where we're having to deal with it. Uh, we're dealing with the same fraud that everyone's dealing with in terms of ransomware and and other types of phishing that uh, tricks people into clicking on lakes that they shouldn't click on. So we're dealing with all that, you know, on top of the fact that there's we're specifically targeted targeted for things that are uh, going on, fraud that's going on, and real estate transaction. Would you say most prevalent types of fraud or cyber threats that we all face in this industry? Well, I think that we see in our industry, we see every single day wire fraud. Uh, so we are, we have all these transactions. If you go look on the Morty's Bankers Association's website, they show you how many transactions go on during the year in both resale transactions, new home transactions, refi, if you add those all up and it's trillions of dollars. It goes to our escrow accounts. And, uh, all of that just makes a very tempting target for the bad guys that are out there, the fraudsters, the criminals, criminal organizations. They more and more realize that they need to find the they need to work harder all the time to try to find ways to inter, intercept those transactions and try to insert their fraudulent wire instructions. So I think that's one thing that's going on and just continues to be very prevalent every single day of our lives. And then, like I said, on top of that. Seller impersonation fraud has really stunned us as to how much, how all of us are having to deal with the fact that there are people out there impersonating owners of property to uh, try to trick realtors and title companies into contracting on a piece of land where the, pro- the property owner doesn't know a thing about it. It's an impersonator pretending to be them. Yeah, Brenda and I had a converse, Brenda Nelson and I had a conversation about that several months ago, and I was stunned. To, to, you know, to even hear the charm, you know, I, it was something I had never even heard of before. And in addition to that, you mentioned even, you know, um, all, type, all all other types of impersonation. Recently, I read a blog on voice impersonation. So I'm assuming that that's an emerging trend and a new tactic that fraudsters are using. Any thoughts on that? It is uh, deep fakes or videos where you can impersonate someone over a Zoom call and you're pretending to be a buyer or seller or borrower. It could be all kinds of things. Uh, or a realtor. And to trick a buyer into accepting fraudulent uh, wiring instructions. Uh, certainly voice impersonation. They 
artificial intelligence allows that. So all of those types of strategies our industry is going to have to continue to stay up to speed on and uh, create processes and create uh, training so that we don't fall victim to those types of frauds that are kind of piled on top of you know the, the types of uh, fraudulent transactions that we're dealing with already. And my first exposure to Southern Prestation Fraud was 13 months ago. So, you know, it's our, I'd never heard of it either. And, uh, you know, our very first transaction where we had someone trying to impersonate a seller was a very large multi million dollar transaction. It was a sale of a ranch land. And we were kind of oblivious to what the, what the different types of strategies they would use. And we got lucky and were tipped off during the transaction. And I think probably 48 hours later, we had all new processes in place to protect ourselves from that type of fraud. But it was a big shock to us. It, 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 it's staggering. Even think about it. Speaking of processes, are you, can you talk a little bit about that? Are there any specific areas um, that are most prone to some some of these attacks? Sure. Well, specifically with seller impersonation fraud, uh, they tend to focus on vacant land, but really a better term would be not an owner occupied land. So it could property. So it could be a red house. It could be a short term rental. It can be a second home, a vacation home. So it's not just vacant land. It's anything where there's not someone, the owner isn't living on the property so that they can be aware of, you know, what's going on. And, uh, yeah, title companies do a number of things. Uh, where we, over the course of this year, we've learned how to verify parties that we're dealing with much better than we did in the past. And, there's some new technologies coming out for our industry where if they're going to be able to do that even better. Uh, we uh, Many title companies send a letter to the property owner at the ta- address in the tax records, at the address on the grantee's deed, uh, at the address at, at the property, because many times it gets forwarded, send a confirmation letter saying thank you for closing uh, on the upcoming transaction. Uh, and part of our fraud protection is let us know if this is a Jew. And we've gotten many, many phone calls from sending those letters out saying, no, that is not me. I am not selling my property. So there's a number of other signs like that where we never did that in the past, but you know, now we know to do that. So it's putting in, in place some best practices, I guess, to enhance your support. What are things we formed a uh, seller Impersonation task force with inside of TLTA, and as a group, very quickly put that together, and very quickly put together a list of best practices. So there's uh, again a number of things that we can do. We can do a reverse search on the phone number, so we're always go to phone number to deal with them. They actually like fraudsters tend to like to work through text or mail only, and email, and not not want to appear in person, obviously. So uh, if you, once you have that phone number, you can do a reverse search on it and see who owns it. And there's software out there that lets you do that. And we've also been very effective at identifying that it's a burner phone or it's a phone owned by somebody else. It's not the person that they're representing that they are. Uh, yeah, I think the other probably big issue in this whole area is that for, for I don't know, you know, a hundred years, it's auto companies have been used to looking at a photo ID and assuming that if it's not out of date and it doesn't look funny, you know, based on what we might know, that we accept it. And we're now realizing that fraudsters and uh, even artificial intelligence is helping produce very uh, good fake IDs that will pass being scanned. So we can't just rely on that anymore either. So it's it's a kind of a multi-layered approach. You have to have layers of defenses that are constantly checking for, uh, do you know for sure you're dealing with the person you think you're dealing with? You mentioned that there's some new technologies coming out. Is there anything specific that you could share with us? Agents to be It's advanced uh, ID validation software. So it checks, you know, once you input phone number, 
email address, uh, address, possibly a social security uh, number. So four or five pieces of information, it starts checking and correlating all kinds of things, as maybe as many as 100 different data points to determine if that person really is the person you're dealing with. It's pretty amazing software. And I know that there's, uh, within our group of title insurance vendors, there's at least four of them that have those types of software that have been recently released. And many time companies are very much using them now. So we, I would, I would recommend that every title company be looking at those software solutions and consider the fact that it's really a new mindset. That's in our, in our presentation we're going to make next month with the, the old Republic Academy. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about is that it's really a new mindset that we need to have. We've been a very trusting industry. We, people come to buy real estate, they're involved with the realtor. We just tend to trust the fact that if you're going to be getting a loan and you're going to be working with a realtor, you're probably who you say you are. And a new reality is that we mean to not trust anything. We mean to be suspicious and we need to validate people. We need to validate documents that are presented to us. If they weren't signed and notarized in front of us with our own notaries, we need to be suspicious of those documents. Uh, we may need to reject them, or we need to do extra work to validate them. Uh, know who the notary was, contact that notary. We need to validate every single wire. And there's also software out there that does that. It goes out and it checks to see, is that account that you are wiring to, is it really owned by the title company or owned by the seller? Um, well, it does a really good job. The software that's out there now does a really good job of validating uh, bank accounts and wires. So we need to run our wiring instructions through that validation process. So we validate everything. We validate people, documents, and wires. That's kind of the approach that we need to be taking from here on. Sounds like the word of the year is we have to be suspicious of everything. Yes, it is. That's, and even with emails that come in, if it's something we don't recognize. It, you know, and it's not just our industry. That's every single industry, e-commerce solutions that are out there and vendors uh, in the medical field. Uh, everything is being attacked. Many breaches are occurring. Uh, people are having to uh, go through this process in every industry of tightening up their cybersecurity and tightening up their general processes, their protection of customer data. You know, that's just happening in every industry, and we're not excluded. We're, we're right along with all the other industries. Yeah. It's so interesting that te technology has, you know, it has offered so many great new solutions and, op and options for everybody, not just in our industry, but in all industries, but it also has created this new level of concern that never, you know, in the days when I was doing real estate transactions, we had to physically carry the, you know, the paper documents to the loan officer and sit there like you were sitting in front of the principal almost and wait for them to review the document before they issued a live check. So, well, you know, in today's world, um, anyone, whether your business or your personal life, if you write a check, you're at risk of check washing, where your check gets intercepted. They use chemicals to remove an amount or remove a uh, the payee, and you can wind up uh, losing money that way. On a personal level, I don't write any more checks ever. Uh, and the businesses hopefully have uh, reverse policy pay or policy pay that will protect them but only if it's also protecting on the payee because as a business, I've seen this year or last year, I've seen title companies get have losses because a check they issued was intercepted. They lost the payee because their policy pay did not protect on that and insert a new payee. And it might be a $300,000 payoff I got intercepted. And it can get intercepted at many places in the entire process the mail system, at the actual post office, there's there's many different points in the process where those checks can get intercepted, get washed, and get cast and deposited and cleared, and the banks 
and out of the bank sees a normal realistic check. If it's not protecting on the payee, it'll on the on the amount and the check number, it'll go right through your escrow account. So many different places where fraud and losses can occur. My goodness. Wow, that's a new one on me. It can't possibly hit me a lot of that. Yeah, don't 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 go Google it. You'll you'll be terrified at how much information is out there about uh, check washing and how many losses are taken in all industries, not just again our industry. Although we issue a lot of checks, so uh, you know it's something to be concerned about. I think absolutely. <laughs> well, I think I could sit here and talk with you for hours, but um, uh, <laughs> we like to always get to the bottom line um, on our show, and so it's just like the bottom line. You on what preventative measure or practice? Do you think it's most important for real estate professionals to take so that they can safeguard themselves against fraud and cyber attacks? Um, so I think it's a, I think that the best one of the best ways to do it is a multi-layered defense. It's not just one thing. Uh, it's not just processes, which, for instance, in celebration fraud, checking phone numbers, who owns it, uh, sending a letter. That's one level. Another level is to have uh, the ability to check IDs, train your employees on the different ways of the fake IDs can be presented. Many times the fake IDs are very good. So if you have a little bit of training, you will easily pick up on those. And in fact, the National Notary Association publishes a guide and go to the National Notary Association website and order guides for every single state about how to uh, verify that a driver's license is valid. And many times, driver's license, the, the, the fake ones are very good, and you can tell it, but like I said, more and more, they're getting to be very good. So that's, that's just one layer. Another layer is to get the different types of software that are out there, and there's, there's software for wires, there's software for ID validation, uh, there's software for, uh, obviously, to protect you for phishing uh, and to train everyone not to be susceptible to phishing because that all, all, many times starts the whole process. Someone clicks on a link they shouldn't click on. So you just have to look at it as a very holistic approach. It's not one little thing that you can do or not one solution that solves everything. Uh, I kind of combine it. There's real estate fraud, there's cyber fraud, and there's regulatory requirements. You kind of have to look at all of those put together. And that's, again, what we're going to cover in our our webinar next month is uh, just looking at real estate fraud alone, but combining it with the different regulatory requirements that you have, along with the different uh, best practices that you have to have to be able to prevent fraud and uh, avoid becoming a victim to the different types of fraud. Uh, I think within wire fraud, uh, again, multi-layered approach, you've really got to educate your staff about things to watch for. So we're not, as a title company, of victim of fraud, but we also do what we can to keep buyers from being tricked into uh sending money to the wrong people because that's been a real problem in our industry of we do everything we're supposed to do and uh, we've got very tight processes within our settlement environment and then the fraudster is uh, following along because they breached a realtor's system and is getting emails and seeing what's going on or what I mean there's how many parties are there in a real estate transaction probably you count appraiser and loan officers and and uh, processors and and uh, inspectors and all the different people involved. There's probably 20 different email addresses that are involved in a real estate transaction. And they're any one of them, if they've been breached, they, they know exactly what the closing date is, the closing amount is, and they know when to send that fake email to the buyer. It says, send us your your down payment early to this set of wiring instructions. So you have to train your buyers and have a really good process in place and good education so that they don't become the victim. Because we don't want that to happen. We we can't protect them from everything, but we can do our best to use those practices to try to keep them from being a victim, victimized to it. Processors are just very, very creepy in the way they can go about attacking our transactions. 
My goodness. Well, I think educating buyers, that's a really good way for us to um, to wrap things up here. Um, I, David, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. If you're interested in the webinar, it is going to be held on March 14th. I believe it's at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, contact your old public title sales rep. If you need more information on it, or you, I believe you can register by going to all the public title stars link if you're an agent. So again, David, thank you very much. I look forward to um, participating or joining the webinar next month and uh, really appreciate uh, your insight and your thoughts and your suggestions. And again, thank you. Certainly. Glad to be here. Thank you for letting me join you. Great. All right. Well, to our audience, thank you as well. And um, until we meet again, may we all continue to learn, grow, and prosper. <music>